So continuing on with collections with our theatre class. So looking at the top of it, up here we've set on line 10, private list seat, and we're using an array list. So we can easily now change that format to a linked list. Linked list and the code would still work. We can still run that. And everything still works as it did before. We can see the first time it was reserved, the second time you need to pay because it's already been reserved. So clearly the implementation is still working. But we can be even more generic than that because uh, we can change list to a collection. So we could do something like this. We can change the list there to collection. And that's really doing using just that. It's making it really, really generic by making it of type collection. So the advantage of doing that is that it enables us to use any of the collection classes to hold our seats. Now before we go ahead and do that, uh, what I want you to do is have a look at this interface hierarchy of the collections framework. And uh, the Java docs are pretty good here. So I'm going to take a copy of this link off the screen. Okay, so I'm just going to fire up a browser and we'll paste the link in. And the link will also be in the resources section. So you can see here this little diagram, it gives you a little bit, a little good overview uh, of the collections classes. So the interfaces uh, set, list, queue and DQ all extend the collection interface. And there's also a sorted set as you can see there. And uh, that extends set. Now incidentally the framework also contains a separate hierarchy for maps and I'll be discussing those later. So when we declare seats to be of type collection, we can implement the list of seats in a theater using any concrete class that implements one of the interfaces that extend collection, as you can see on the screen there. Now we've already used array list and linked list that implement the list interface previously. And uh, we could also use a hash set or a linked hash set that implements set if we want to. And uh, as it turns out, I'm going to use each in turn and verify that the program still runs. So let's try it first with a hash set. So I'm going to go back to my code. Now that we've set it as collection, we can change it over here from linked list to a hash set set and we can go back and run this. Still works as you can see there. We can get rid of the get uh, the commented out code. So in other words, we can see the uh, seats uh, and rows. You can see they're all still there. Noting they're now in a different order, but they are still there and that's because we're using sets. But we can also go back and use the linked hash set. So linked hash set as you can see there. We can run that. And notice how that returns in order this time. Now we're going to be looking at sets in more detail shortly, but at the moment, hopefully, this should really demonstrate how array list and linked list fit into the collections framework and uh, that they can be replaced with other data structures if that structure uh, provides benefit for a particular task. Now, note, however, with that said, you must remain on the same level of the hierarchy. So going back to our little diagram, so although we can use any concrete class that implements set, list, queue, or DQ, what we can't do is drop down a level and still expect things to work. So the collections framework also includes a tree set, which you don't see on the screen there, uh, but that implements sorted set, so it's sort of one level down. But if we go ahead and try and use that, tree set, if we run, try and run that, we actually get an error. And the error there is it's a class cast exception, and uh, it's having trouble casting to the comparable because we're using tree set which again is one level down so tree set would uh, be below sorted set so any of these you can use but you can't use the ones below that directly so i'm just going to close that uh, we'll move this over a bit close it down and just undo that change go to a linked hash set now tree set as it turns out that we try to use implement sorted set and uh, actually what it does it's navigable set which extends sorted set and uh it's got an additional requirement that elements in it must contain or must be comparable. Then that's how the set is sorted. And because we didn't make the seat class comparable, that's why we got that class cast exception if we tried to add it to a tree set. Now as we move down the hierarchy, the interfaces become more specialized. So we can only replace classes with other classes that implement one of the one or of the core collection interfaces at the same level. So the diagram that I've seen a few times is uh, that, that we looked at, and I'll just go back to it again. And you can see below that it's actually got the text a set is a special kind of collection, a sorted set is a special kind of set, and so on. And that's why we've got that issue with making sure things are, on the, uh, are at the same level when we're trying to uh, replace and use them. Now before we move on to look at what uh, other classes are and why we might want to prefer to use one instead of our lists, let's talk about some of the remaining methods provided by the collections framework to work with lists. 
Now, although there's not really that many seats in this in our theatre, going back to our code, the reserved seat method isn't really efficient the way we've written it. And uh, to see how many seats are, how many seats it has to check in order to find H2, uh, I'm going to make a little bit of a change here to print a full stop every time the loop goes around. And I'm going to do that on line 31. So I'm going to change that and do a print system out message, print a dot. And that's going to be a print instead of a print in. So it's going to print a dot on the screen so we'll know how many seats it's had to check to find the, the, the relevant seat. And what we'll also do is we'll go back, change this to an array list, which is what we started with. So if we go back and run that, and the other thing I'll do is I'll comment out this get seats method again so we don't see all the seats on the screen. So if we run this, now you can see that there was a lot of dots there on the screen, a heck of a lot of dots before it found seat 11. So it's very inefficient the way it's been uh, designed at the moment. And uh, you can more or less say it's referred to as a brute force search in that it scans every element until it finds the one we want. Now the collections class provides a binary search method that performs much better so that uh, as a result we can improve the reserve seat method and its performance. Now in order to get that to work, we need to implement the comparable interface in our seats class and that's so that Java knows how to compare two seats. So what we need to do is go back to theater again and we need to change our definition. We've got public uh, class seat down here class seat, we want to change that to implements comparable comparable and we're going to compare it on seat of course which is this object and then what we need to do is add the comparable code so that again Java knows how to compare two seats. What we're going to do is just below here is we're going to add, we're going to override the compare to and we need that of course so that the comparison will work. So we're going to override to be compared to down here. Actually, it's an interface, so we're implementing it. So compare to, you can see it's the parameter is the seat. I'm going to change it. It's got O to the seat, so that makes more sense for us. And what we can do to figure out the comparison, it's uh, actually a one-liner we can do here. Instead of returning zero, we're going to return this dot seat number dot compare to ignore case seat dot get seat number. So that's going to return the zero, uh, number less than zero, uh, a number zero if they're equal, and of course a number greater than zero uh, if it's greater than. And we saw that before we've used compar comparable, I know, previously in the course. So by doing it this way now, what we've got is a comparison uh, that uh, fulfills the interface, and it means that uh, we can now be able to use a different type of set for our searching, which is a lot more efficient. So now that we've done this, it's now a lot more efficient. We've added a compare to, and we can start implementing this binary list, a binary search, I should say, and it's going to be a lot more efficient. And as you can see with the compare to method, we're really just using the compare to method that's built into the string class. And we make it's not really anything specialized other than that. But the important thing here is that the seat class could contain more than one field. And if that was the case, Java wouldn't have any idea which one would be used for the comparison. So if you did have a more complex class, then this is where you'd put your code in for testing that uh, using the comparable interface. And then you'd then provide a compared to method that the framework can use, which we've done here now. So now that we've done that, if we go back up and check our reserve seat, we can change this a little bit now. So we can go back to the top. So the first bit is uh, we're going to create a requested seat. So instead of making that null, that's going to be equal to new seat new seat because we're going to be using comparison now seat and it's going to be seat number the number that's passed all so that's going to give us the object for comparison purposes like so and what we want to do is change this completely so I'm going to put int found seat seat equals collections dot binary search and the search is going to be on seats which is our list of seats and on the seat that uh, we want to search it against, which is the requested seat we've just created on line 29. And then we're passing null because we're going to use the inbuilt uh, comparison operator there. So once we do that, we're going to get a number back. And the other thing I'll need to do to avoid this error here is we need to change this collection back to a list because that's what we were working on initially. And that error should then go away. So that's going to use the comparable interface. And it's going to use the method that we implemented to check using the string compare to operator or compare to ignore case method to do the comparison for us. So then all we need to do after that is just check for a number that's greater than or equal to zero. So if found seat is greater than or equal to zero, 
return seats.get found seat dot reserve and then we'll put an else in here else there is no seat plus seat number return false and unless we've got all this extra code here now that we don't need which I'll comment out that's all been replaced now with the collections binary search which is a lot more efficient now the reason that the binary search is more efficient, it's really the fastest way to find an item in a sorted list. And it works by checking the element in the midpoint of the list. So the method basically plays higher or lower with the list. So if the middle element is greater than the item we're looking for, then it knows the one we want must be in the first part of the list. So what it does then, it performs, it performs a binary search on that half of the list in the same way. So the list of elements is reduced to half each time. So as a result, it uh, will take no more than 10 checks to find an item or decide it's not a present uh, in a list of 1,024 elements, 2 to the power of 10 is 1,024. So over a million items, actually 1,048,576 can be checked in no more than 20 comparisons and 64 comparisons are all that's required to search a list with an absolutely huge number. So 1.844 to 10 to the 19th element. So a number like this in other words. So that would only take 64 comparisons. So it's blindingly fast compared to the brute force approach that we took earlier where we were just going through each and every record. So you're not really going to be able to see too much in terms of performance. If we actually run this just to confirm that it does work, you can see that it does certainly work as it did before. But what I'm going to do is paste some code in, which is the code from the uh, actual binary search Java source code that comes with Java. And I'm going to paste that into our theater method. Now, we could go ahead and make a change to the Java source files, but that wouldn't be a good idea in this case because we'd be changing the official Java source code. So it's easier to just convert the, or just to copy the code in there. But it's really a useful exercise to see how that works. And uh, one of the reasons we want to do that is so that we can see the full stop. We can put some full stops in to uh, see the progress and how many times it takes compared to our previous attempt as to how many seats it needed to search for. Because obviously when we use collections.binary search, we uh, haven't directly got a way of getting access to seeing that. But if we change the code, we can do it. So what we're going to do is copy and paste this code to replace our method, and then we'll be able to see it working in action. So I'm going to come here and I'll copy all this commented out code, or overwrite it I should say, so there's nothing there. And we'll paste that in. This is the source code that uh, is part of the binary search that comes with Java. So you can see what it's doing. It's uh, And obviously we've, uh, it's been adapted to, for our particular purposes, but essentially all the code is exactly the same. So we're accepting a seat number, and you can see it's using the low-high approach. It's starting with the low is the number zero, and the high is the last element minus one. And it's using this high element to determine the comparison, and it's sort of splitting it in half each two there, finding the midpoint, as I talked about and it's going through and returning the relevant uh, comparison operator depending on the result. And I'll just fix that little error up there. So consequently now, we should be able to run this and see how many dots it uh, are printed compared to the last uh, attempt of our code. So if we run that, you can see that in this case, seat 11 was found in only, what's that, six dots? Significantly faster than the last case. So let's, let's uh, try booking a few other things just to see the different uh, results here. So we could uh, try booking D12. That's probably going to give us one of the best cases. So if we try D12, D12, and what I'll do is I'll just take this second part out now because we don't need that anymore. Just to, We want to just run to see how fast it is. So if we try that, obviously there was significantly, it was only the second time, the se it went through once and then on the second time it threw it found D12, so it's much, much faster. H12 or, H or B11 are two of the worst. And also to try one that doesn't exist, let's try something like, say, B13. If we run that, you can see that it didn't go through all the elements. It's still only, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven iterations, including the last one, that there's no seat B13. So it's significantly faster than our other attempt at uh, searching. Now, obviously, in, its, in this particular case, with only 96 seats in our theatre, it's not really an issue. But when you start talking thousands of records using... Uh, features like this, in this case the binary search which is part of the collections framework, makes a lot more sense. Now the other thing I want to point out is getting back to this code, 
Normally we wouldn't copy the collection, method, uh, collection methods like this, we just call them like we did with the binary search earlier before I copy and paste it over it. But it's just really interesting to see how efficient the binary search algorithm is. And we did that by adding the, the dot to show us how many uh, iterations it took to get to where we wanted to go to. And it's also good to know that we don't have to write our own versions of the algorithms that are included in the collections class. So I'm going to end the video here now. In the next video, we'll go on and talk some more about the binary search and uh, how it works. And uh, we'll move on to the next step. So I'll see you in the next video.